being able to move to a team in Europe had its advantages. The biggest of them for his personal life being the fact there were mere two hours between him and Tendo now instead of the previous twelve. Being able to see each other much more often, without being tired and jet-lagged, was an ultimate treat. And that was exactly why Ushijima was now on the way to the airport, barely able to contain his excitement. After all, he was going to see his boyfriend in just about half an hour. Even though it had only been a month since their last meeting, every day felt like a whole eternity sometimes. But now, finally, both Tendo and him had free time to meet again and they sure were going to make every second count. He settled in the airport hall close to the arrival board, giving a small smile to a kid sitting next to him and watching him with widened eyes. He continued to check his watch every few minutes until the plane from Paris was finally listed as landing. He didn't wait for anything and jumped up, rushing to the arrival gate. Spotting Tendo in the crowd wasn't difficult, especially since the tall redhead actually beamed upon spotting him. Dashi! Ushijima didn't stagger this time when Tendo threw himself around his neck a soft laugh bubbling in his throat. Welcome, dear. How was the flight? Tendo huffed, though Ushijima was sure it was just an acted annoyance. Horrible! Keeping me away from you for so long without a good company to talk to. That guy sitting next to me was so rude. He stopped listening after just five minutes. Would you believe that? Ushijima chuckled. Are you sure you weren't talking a hole into his head? The betrayal! And here I thought you would be on my side. I'm just stating facts. Then they'll pout it. Unbelievable. This is what I get for being a great friend and boyfriend. He stuttered when Ushijima pulled him back into his arms to hug him properly. I'm sorry, dear. I promise I'll listen to everything you have to say. Grinning, Tendo ruffled his hair. I'll take your word for it. Should we get my luggage? I would really appreciate your help. I, um, went a bit overboard, I suppose. But that shouldn't be an issue for my incredibly strong boyfriend, right? Ushijima shook his head in a loving exasperation. Grab Tendo's carry-on with one hand and Tendo's hand with the other, leading the way to the luggage belt. He listened to Tendo's lively chirping as they waited for the luggage belt to move, only occasionally adding his own remark or not, very much enjoying the way Tendo's face brightened. Yeah, and then this woman came into the shop and... Hey, that's my bag! Ushijima snapped out of his thoughts and followed Tendo's gaze to a man dragging a bag with bright yellow straps on it, which he unmistakably recognized as Tendo's. The guy stopped. No, that's mine. Fuck off. Not gonna happen. This is my bag and you are a thief. Now hand it over before I call security. Oh, please. You think they'll listen to some foreign monster like Weirdo? Ushijima clenched his jaw. He wasn't sure before whether he should get into a scuffle since he believed in Tendo's ability to deal with it himself. However, the man's words made his blood boil, and the small flinch in Tendo's face only intensified his anger. He strode towards the guy, satisfaction flaring in his chest when he noticed how the other recoiled at the sight of him walking closer. I believe this bag doesn't belong to you. How would you know, huh? It's mine. No, it's not. I was the one who put the straps on it, and I know for sure it belongs to my husband. He leaned down to the guy's eye level, lowering his voice into the most threatening growl he managed. Hand it over, get lost, and don't ever dare to call my husband this word again. Understood? 
the guy paled and bolted away, leaving the bag behind. Clearing his throat, Ushijima picked it up and quickly returned to Tendo to check on him, only to find him looking at him with widened eyes and parted lips. I'm sorry, was it too much? Oh, no, no, I just... Did you just call me your husband? Yes. And those eyes no less than sparkled. He gave him a quick peck on the cheek before hugging him tightly. That was awesome! Did you see how he ran? He lowered his voice into a whisper. And you can call me your husband more often. It's... It's nice to hear, you know? Ushijima smiled and returned the hug. Anytime. Let's go home, shall we? Even though Suna had his doubts about the challenge, he had to admit it was one of the nicest he had done so far. Besides, as if he could ever pass on an opportunity to see Osamu get flustered. He loved seeing his boyfriend blushing, especially since he wasn't a one to show emotions often. He couldn't wait for the practice to end so he could visit, and hopefully surprise Osamu in the restaurant. He was pretty sure Komori and Washio were rolling their eyes behind his back, since he couldn't help but glance at the clock every two minutes in hopes time was going faster than it seemed, but he didn't care. They were even worse when it came to their partners, especially Komori. Not that he didn't wish his former and current Libero teammates all the best, but he could live without having to listen to Komori blabber about their latest dates. He bought it into the changing room the second their coach dismissed the practice, throwing his things in his bag without any order just so he could be outside already. Oh my, someone's impatient. Narrowing his eyes, he threw a warning glare at Komori. What? Nothing. I'm sure Osamu will wait for you, you don't have to rush so much. What makes you think I'm going to see him? I might as well just be happy I can finally go home. Yeah, sure. My dear Rin, you are forgetting I spent a lot of time with you and I know for sure that the prospect of seeing Osamu is the only thing that can make you move this fast. Suna turned away, grumbling under his breath, but there was no denying he got busted. It's because I get free food out of it. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you say. He grinned and patted his shoulder. You don't have to be ashamed of admitting you love your boyfriend. Take me and Akagi, for example. We always... Suna groaned. Oh no, 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 I'm not listening to this again. He grabbed his bag and bolted it out of the changing room. He had other, more important matters to attend right now. He was lying only partially. Of course he was in for the free food too. No one could pass on Osamu's cooking, especially a supportive boyfriend Suna was. The small bell above the door announced his arrival to the few guests that were sitting in the restaurant and the new helper behind the counter Osamu hired just a few weeks ago. The guy looked up and flashed Suna a bright smile. Suna-san, welcome. We didn't expect you today. osamu -san will be here soon. He's in the storage getting some ingredients. Uh, do you want anything in the meantime? Suna couldn't help but smile in return. The guy was nice and skilled, and Suna was glad Osamu wasn't carrying everything on his shoulders alone anymore. Sure, can you give me the salmon onigiri? The last batch was great. Of course, do. It's okay, Riku. I'll take it. Soon, Osamu emerged from the back room, and Suna rejoiced. Took you long enough? 
Osamu rolled his eyes and set the bag he carried on the counter before leaning over it to give Suna a welcome kiss. So impatient. I thought you said we'll meet at home today. Yeah, but I can't pass on the opportunity to see my husband, can I? He waited for Osamu's response, but to his surprise, Osamu didn't react with anything more than a small smile before he turned his attention to the rice in front of him. I guess that's fair, but you just wanted free onigiri, didn't you? Suna paused. Well, yeah, but... Did you hear what I said? You wanted salmon onigiri? No, not... that. The other thing. Osamu tilted his head, apparently confused. That you wanted to see me? Yeah, I heard that too. Suna opened and closed his mouth on empty, completely baffled. Was he being made fun of, or did Osamu simply not care? He would take any reaction, in fact, even an angry one over this lack of anything. Rin? I'll be back soon. He got up and strode out of the door, the clinking of bell playing on his already strained nerves. He leaned on the restaurant wall and took a deep breath. Does he really not care at all? Or was he so embarrassed he rather didn't react at all? He sighed, rubbing his suddenly very tired eyes. Perhaps he should have thought about it better before doing the challenge. He jumped when a hand squeezed his shoulder. Oh, Jesus Christ! Sorry, you were spaced out. The onigiri is ready. Come on, he must be starving. He took Suna's hand, but Suna stayed where he was and instead pulled away. What's wrong? You're acting strange. Did something happen? Suna clenched his jaw. Why didn't you react when I called you my husband? Did you just ignore it because it's embarrassing or because you just don't want to be? Osamu paused, an innocent expression on his face. Why would I react? I'll be calling you that too one day. I just think it's sweet you chose the restaurant to say it. Makes it more special. Suna gaped at him for a moment before he smacked his shoulder. You are such an idiot. I thought you were so embarrassed you chose to ignore it. How could I be embarrassed by that? I take great pride in that, you know? He took Suna's hand again and motioned to the door. Come on, let's get you something to eat before we go home. You didn't have to come with me. I could do this myself. Ayato huffed quietly and squeezed Taichi's hand a bit tighter. And let you deal with those assholes alone again? Not happening. Aya. What? I'm not letting them harass you again. They'll just turn on you. All the more reason to go with you. They will focus on me and leave you alone. They did enough harm to you already. Taichi sighed, but a slight trembling of his hand told Hayato he was barely holding himself together. They were on their way to the Kawanishi residence to hopefully make a thick line behind everything, which would finally let Taichi get out from under his family's influence. Despite trying to look strong, Taichi's skin was paler than the wall behind him and his eyes constantly darted around once again telling Hayato he did the right thing when he offered to come along. Even if he was just a moral support, he wasn't going to let Taichi face his family alone. They stopped in front of a big gate and an even bigger house, a disgusting flaunting of wealth in Hayato's humble opinion. He glanced at Taichi, who seemed like he was held together only by the sheer willpower to be over this. He covered his cheek. 
You don't have to go there if you don't want to. They caused you enough trouble. You don't owe them anything. Taichi let out a shattered breath and leaned into the touch, covering Hayato's hand with his own. I want to throw this behind my back. And if I have to go back to be able to do that, then so be it. Alright, let's do this. But remember that I've got your back. No matter what, okay? I know. Thank you. He took a deep breath and pressed the doorbell. It took some time before the gate opened silently and let them into a professionally kept garden. The main door opened and a young woman dressed in some expensive clothes leaned on the door frame. It wasn't difficult to spot the similarities between the siblings, though the woman's eyes were much colder than Tai Chi's. I didn't think I would actually see you here again. Believe me, I wouldn't come here if I didn't have to. Is father home? In his office. She turned her eyes gaze to Hayato. He didn't say you will come with someone? Hayato shrugged. I'm just a company, don't mind me. Father won't be glad. He can come with me. I don't care what father thinks. The woman measured them with unreadable expression for a moment before stepping aside. Very well, but I warned you. I appreciate it, but I don't need your warnings. I know what I'm going into. With that, he gently tucked on Hayato's hand and continued inside the house. Hayato grinned, bumping their shoulders together. They stopped in front of heavy-looking wooden door. Spotting Taichi's hesitation, Hayato caressed his hand. I'm still with you. Taichi gave him a barely noticeable smile and then knocked on the door. The head of Kawanishi family looked exactly how Hayato remembered him from several years prior when he had the misfortune of meeting him. Tall and lean with auburn hair and hard eyes that didn't allow any discussion. Exactly the type of person Hayato would rather not know. I don't remember inviting your friend to. That is stilled. Why did you call me here? I thought you don't want to have anything with me since I'm such a disappointment. Die, stop. You don't have to lower yourself because of him. The older man scowled. I didn't ask for your input. You aren't even supposed to be here, so be quiet. This is between me and my son. Leave him alone. Tell me why you wanted me here or I'm leaving. The man grunted under his breath, but got up and handed Taichi a few papers. I saw your reports from college, and you are doing surprisingly well. So, I am willing to pay for your tuition again. Hato blinked, unsure if he heard right. The man refused to give Taichi a single yen since he found out about their relationship and Taichi's unwillingness to take over the family business. It would be a great financial relief for both of them too, since Taichi's tuition was biting off a lot of their shared budget. However, he was sure this didn't come just like that. Taichi seemed to arrive to the same conclusion. But? But you will move back here and learn how to run a business. He threw Hayato a barely disguised, disgusted glare. You can see your friend occasionally, if you insist on it so much, but the relationship won't continue as it is. Those are my terms. Hayato had to physically restrain himself from telling the guy to go fuck himself. The obvious attempt to gain control over Taichi's life again made him sick, and would make him hate the man in front of him even more if that was possible. 
but this wasn't his decision to make. He was here to support Daichi, and it would stay that way even if he had to take back the only thing he never wanted back. Not gonna happen. I'm not coming back here, and I'm certainly not going to break up with Hayato just because you told me so. The man's eyes darkened. Are you really prioritizing him over your family? You could at least choose better when you insist on dating men. He doesn't even have a degree. All he does is chase a ball. A dog can do that. Rage bubbled in Hayato's chest, but that was nothing compared to the aura suddenly emitted by Taichi. His eyes widened as he watched Taichi's face scrunch in fury, his voice sharper than a knife. Don't you dare to talk about my future husband like that ever again! Husband? What are you talking about? Daichi raised his hand with the engagement ring. This. I mean this. I don't care about what you think. I'm done with this family. Keep your money and go to hell. Disown me for all I care. You will regret this. Hardly. Even if I end up living on the street, at least I'll have someone who loves me. Can you say the same? I highly doubt that. He grabbed Hato's hand and marched out of the office without a single look back. Hayato tried to keep up with Taichi's long strides, trotting by his side a bit breathless until they finally got out of the house. He hissed when his knee twisted the wrong way on one of the stepping stones, sharp pain shooting through his whole leg. Taichi stopped immediately. Shit, sorry, I went too fast, didn't I? What hurts? I'm so sorry, I didn't realize. It's okay, I just need to catch my breath. Still, he let Taichi help him hop outside the gate, smiling despite his whole side feeling like on fire. I'm so sorry. I wanted to get out and forgot you can't. I'm sorry. Feeling the spiral forming in Taichi's head, Ayato cupped his cheeks to turn his attention to him. It's okay. No big deal. I'm glad you are out of there and I'm so proud of you for standing up to him. You deserve much better. He reached up to steal himself a quick kiss. It's nice to be called your husband. I... It felt like a good thing to say. It was the best thing. Did you see his face? I bet he's still thinking about it. He reached up for another kiss. Let's go home. I think we deserve a treat after this. How's the challenge you thought of going? Yatani grinned, barely stopping himself from contently rubbing his hands together. I think it's going great. No one's complaining yet. Seems like they can't wait to call their partner's husbands for real. He bent down to toss a ball to Bruno before taking hold of Yahaba's hand again. They decided to take advantage of the nice weather and go for a walk to a nearby park. A decision especially Bruno seemed to appreciate. But Kyotani also didn't complain. Watching the pup running around and listening to Yahaba's light laughter, he was once again reminded just how lucky he got in life. I mean, can you blame them? And it's really nice to hear too. He tapped on the ring around his finger. Personal experience. I'm glad you came up with something nice. It was needed. Listening to all of them, they needed something sweet. I just helped them out a bit. Smiling, Yaba kissed his cheek. You are a true mastermind, dear. Kyotani rolled his eyes and pulled Yaba to his side by his waist smirking upon hearing the surprised yelp his boyfriend let out. His fiancé let out. The smirk thought into a soft smile. 
His dad couldn't believe he got to call someone like Yahaba his fiance. It felt like yesterday when they stood awkwardly face to face in the Seijo gym trying to work out their feelings. However, as sweet as the memory was, it brought along another, much more bitter one, and Kyotani's heart sank with the reminder of the moment that almost drove a hedge between them for good. You are spacing out, Ken. He looked up, finding Yahaba watching him with deep concern. Sighing, he let go of him. Sorry. For what? What's wrong? Kyotani shrugged. Me being dumb in the past. Well, we were both dumb in the past. That's normal for teenagers, right? Why do you worry about it now? Kyotani kept staring ahead, avoiding looking at the sincerest face he knew and which he had betrayed so many times. For Yahaba's sake, he hoped he wasn't making a bad decision with the proposal. I'm just thinking, are you really as happy with me as you say you are? Of course I am. Why would you ask that? I wouldn't say I am happy if I wasn't. You wouldn't because you are scared of being alone. You stayed with me even though I hurt you so many times before. Even though I might do it again in the future, since I'm still the same idiot I've always been. The confused crease on Yahaba's forehead deepened as he stopped both of them and made Kyotana look at him. What are you talking about? You changed. Matured like all of us. I mean, yeah, there were moments that hurt, but never to the point of driving me away from you. Because I know you are kind deep down and that you care about me. I don't need more than that. Silence settled around them, interrupted only by chirping of birds above them. Kyotani bit his tongue, cursing himself inwardly for bringing it up upon seeing Yahaba's desperate expression. They were supposed to relax, not open old injuries. But he would rather take the ring back than be the cause of Yahaba's suffering. He was bound to screw up at some point again. They both knew it. And it would be even worse when they got married. He started when warm hands covered his cheeks, the soft smile Yahaba gave him turning his knees into jelly. Stop thinking about the past so much and let's focus more on the present, hmm? Right now, I'm super happy you are with me, and the ring is the best gift I've ever got. But... No, listen. Do you seriously think I would be with you if I was worried about you hurting me? I know there were instances when things didn't go well, but I've never regretted being with you. Not even back then, when I was protecting my ego instead of protecting you and talking it out? Not even then. I was sad and scared, sure, but no regret. So stop worrying about it and focus on the nice things, okay? Kyotani was at loss for words for a moment. Then he let out a relieved chuckle and leaned their foreheads together, humming contently when Yahaba gently scratched his knife. You really are a big puppy, aren't you? Speaking of which, I think our actual puppy is sulking now because we don't pay him enough attention. Kyotani looked up and snorted upon spotting Bruno sitting next to them with an expression he could only describe as pouty. He called him over and scratched his head, earning a happy bark. Enjoying what's now, huh? Yep, exactly that. Saves a lot of worries. Alright then, mister, no worries. Race me to the fountain. A competitive glint appeared in Yahaba's eyes. Last one buys dinner. Before Kyotani could react, he bolted towards the large fountain ahead with Bruno soon falling in step beside him. 
Jotani chuckled and headed after them, already knowing his wallet would suffer that evening. But that was fine. As long as he could see Ahaba happy, he would sacrifice anything 